Hello there and welcome back and today we are looking at this beautifully stylish and well minimalistic design of the Nokia 6100. For some reason Nokia decided to follow up on their uh, hit flagship fashion but somewhat entry level 8210 and 8310 successor with a 6 series phone. I guess this was in the midst of the grand success that the 6310i made and while the image uh, that Nokia was really a business class um, phone maker and really their products could could do no wrong. So yeah, that's I guess the story behind the name. It was quite confusing for me as I previously thought the 8000 series was the fashion minimalist design but quite stylish uh, um, range of phones from the entry level 8200 8, series and all the way to the titanium made 8910 but I digress. So anyway, this is the 6100 series. Um, a good hands, a good looking handsome phone, not quite pleasing or eye catching in my mind, but anyway, let's take a closer look, tabletop view and see what it's all about. So let's just turn this thing on and see what we're dealing with here. Naturally the startup button is right here on top as with other Nokias of the time. I just put a SIM card in and time for the uh, obligatory and symbolic uh, PIN number. This is a non-functioning SIM, SIM card by the way, so don't worry about the exposing the security number. Uh, well, the Nokia 6100, it was launched in um, 2002 fourth quarter, if that makes any difference, it's naturally been discontinued by now. It has a, quite a diminutive body uh, at 102 by 44 by 13.5 millimeters. Um, it only weighs 76 grams and it holds a mini SIM. The display is a CSTN 4096 color 1.5 inch display with a 128 by 128 uh, resolution a 1 to 1 ratio. There's adjustable display brightness, four-way scroll, I guess this it's this little thing right here instead of the traditional Navi key that the Nokia's of your hold held. There's only 725 kilobytes of internal memory and that's shared between the phone book and text messages and calendar notes and so on. So no camera, no uh, headphone jack, uh, no Bluetooth, no wireless, no infrared. Well, yes, there is an infrared port, but nothing else, not even a USB connection. So yeah, I guess that's about it on this phone. Let me just um, quickly try to turn on the display and uh, show you the menu in, br in a brief moment. There's messages, call register, phone tools and profiles. So yeah, it's pretty much the typical Nokia platform of the time. Um, the screen quality is laughable right now, but back then we used to think that this was something great, though Nokia themselves didn't adapt the color screen technology right away. So they kind of did an Apple strategy on this one. They they let other manufacturers go for the color screen and polyphonic sounds and they were late to the game but they had really um they had uh, perfected and refined their versions yeah that's about all i care to show or worth mentioning about this phone there's no camera on the back it does look a bit scruffy and worn out and some pieces are cracked but for a phone this age, it's not uncommon. 
So let's look at the interior and see what we're dealing with in terms of hardware. This is the battery. It's held its, uh, well, it's held uh, pretty nice considering this is probably not the original battery, but close to what the thing had when it came out. So I'm sure that this battery is more than 10 years old and still holds its power pretty well. I guess that's impressive in its own. So have a look at the battery itself and the specs. Let me just zoom in. I don't know if you can see that because it's getting pretty dark. So that's the battery itself. It's a, it's a 750 milliamp power BL4C unit. And here is the here are the innards of the phone. I don't know if you can read anything here. I'm pretty sure this is just basic um, unimportant information. And this is the SIM tray. It's a bit finicky because you have to place the SIM card in a in a specific position but once you do that this clasp is able to secure it into place into that notch designed in the housing so yeah yeah there we go so it's a bit finicky but it works once you nail it in place so let me just assemble this thing real quick and we'll draw up some conclusions. So my take on the Nokia 6100, it's one of those all show and no go phones. It's kind of, it kind of reminds me of the BenQ Zemos S68. Sure, it's stylish, well made, well put together, handsome and desirable, but really offers nothing uh, in depth and that's okay I guess for the time this thing was a huge hit. Uh, I'm not really a Nokia fan, I respect their devices and their, I don't know, their pursuit of quality but I don't really embrace their, uh, I didn't embrace their um, philosophy or corporate image or whatever. So Really, to my mind, this is nothing special. Yeah, the the numbers are important and it's sold by the bucket loads. But personally, I wouldn't want to own one. I don't have a desire to collect this type of device. Sure, if you're a Nokia aficionado, yeah, this thing will fit perfectly into your collection. Also, if you're considering phones from the early noughties up to 2010s, yeah, this is also a thing you should own and add to your collection. Um, is it particularly interesting? No. Is it going to be worth something in the near future? I don't think so. The sheer numbers that this thing sold by just makes it way too uh, available on the market to ever be considered valuable. So really that's my take on the Nokia 6100 and remember I buy, collect and sometimes borrow old obsolete tech stuff like this one so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.